and welcome to day two of our Frankie Jean Sew Along. If you've just joined us, you've missed a day, but that's okay. You can catch up by heading to our playlist that says Sew Alongs and looking for Frankie Jean's day one. Yesterday we made the back of our Frankie Jean's. So as you can see, it's got all the lovely paneling and the back jeans pockets on there. So that's what we did on day one. Today we are going to be making the front of the jeans, which also has lovely paneling and front pockets. So stick around and we're gonna sew that now. So today we are focusing on the front of the jeans. So I thought I would show you on a finished pair what the end goal is for tonight's sew along. And it should be a relatively quick one tonight, I'm hoping. So what we are doing is the front paneling and we are adding pockets to the front as well. And as you can see, the way that these pockets have been designed is that the um, paneling is, the top stitching for the pocket is incorporated into the top stitching of this front panel here. And although it looks simple enough once it's finished, there's a little bit of a trick to getting it right so that all the seams on the inside sit properly. So I'm gonna show you how to do that tonight. That's our goal for tonight. Um, and then tomorrow night we will be tackling the zip fly, which will be a fun one as well, and the waistband. So let's kick off tonight's sew along with the front paneling. So here are my pattern pieces. And as I talked about last night on, um, or sorry, two nights ago on the um, day one of the sew along, when I cut out this pattern, I always pin together the pairs for the panelled pieces so that I don't get mixed up with what goes with what. So I've done that again with the front pattern pieces and I just did a rough pin. So I haven't actually pinned them properly. So I will do that now. Um, when I was cutting this one out, I put the notch markings on the dark side of the denim which was not very smart of me, but I can just see it, but you probably can't. So there's two notch markings right there that I'm going to pop together. So the first step when we're sewing our front um, pens with the panels is to pop the panel pieces right sides together. So you'll notice the side piece, if you're doing the pocket, is shorter up the top here, and that is where the little pocket cutout bit is, so that's intentional. But if you aren't adding a pocket at the front, then your front piece will go all the way up to the top there. So I'm just marking, I'm matching the notches there, and then matching at the hem, and up to the top here, and then I'm just going to pop a pin in between each of these, just to make sure Everything goes together nicely. Okay, so we've got this pin together. I'm gonna sew with one centimeter seam allowance. Just starting at the top here. Okay, so we've got both of these front panels stitched together now. Both of those have been stitched with one centimeter seam allowance. Now I need to finish oops, both of these raw edges with my overlocker. So I'm gonna go and do that now and I will be right back. Now got our two front pieces overlocked. Now you're probably thinking now is when we top stitch these panels, but actually we don't. Not if you are adding pockets. So if you are not adding pockets, you would top stitch now at this point. But because we are adding pockets, you need to hold off on the top stitching. So what we are going to do instead is we're just going to press the top part of this seam towards, oops, towards the, the side of the leg. So you can see up the top here, that little bit of overlocking. 
that the seam allowance is going towards the side of the leg. You don't need to press all the way down the leg because we're only um, working with this top part here with the pocket. So just press that top bit and then you're going to set your um, front leg aside for a minute while we work on the pocket piece. So I'll do the same on this side. I'm only pressing this top bit here. So again, the seam allowance is facing towards the side of the leg. And I've just done the top bit and then I'm gonna pop that. Now it's time for us to grab our pocket pieces. So I've got my two pocket pieces and I've also got the optional pocket facing. So when you have a look at your jeans, you'll see that this part here is denim that matches the rest of the jeans. But we don't use denim for the whole pocket, for this whole piece, because it's just too thick, it's unnecessary. So inside the pocket is a lightweight woven fabric, but this facing here is the denim. And if you want to um, use a slightly thicker pocket fabric and have like a feature print in this spot here, you can do that. And in that case, this pocket facing is not necessary. But for the classic jeans look, um, you would use the pocket facing. So the first thing to do is we are going to overlock these two curved edges of our pocket facing. So I'll go and do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my two pocket facings now overlocked. I'm just gonna give them a little press to make sure they're nice and flat for this next step because what we are going to be doing is attaching them to our pocket piece. So I pop it down on top. I don't think I need that anymore. Pop it down on top and line up this top corner here of the pocket with the top corner of the facing. And then once I've got that in the right spot, I'm going to pin it down. So I usually pin one up in the corner there and then along the bottom edge. So there's one done. Do the same with the other pocket. Okay, so we've got those now pinned on. What we're going to do is stitch them onto the pocket piece. Along this bottom curved edge, I'm going to use a normal stitch length. And then on these top sides, I am going to increase my stitch length to a basting stitch. So uh, five for my stitch length along these top, top and side edges. So I'll grab my machine now. now. You can change your thread color to match either your over overlocking thread or your pocket piece, but I'm not going to bother today because um, I think it will be easier for you to see if I don't, and also I'm just being lazy and saving time. So I'm stitching this right where my second row of my overlocking stitch is. And it's just attaching that pocket facing to the pocket piece. So now we have our two pocket pieces ready. So I'm going to get one of my pant legs back. And that's this one. So with my pant leg right side up, I'm going to pop my pocket piece down on top my, with right side down. So the side with the facing on it is facing down. And I'm just going to pin it to the pocket opening here. So when you are sewing this one, there's a bit of a trick to trying to get it lined up perfectly with this panel here. So what I'm going to do is just grab my erasable marker here. So we're going to be sewing down and then, whoops, down and then across. But to get this 
so that it hits right where that panelling is there. I'm just going to mark with my pen. I'm, I'm feeling along to where that fold of the seam is and I'm just marking it with my pen so that when I'm stitching down, I want to be either on that line or slightly to the left of it. So I'm going straight down and again, I'm aiming for that blue line there. And then we pivot and go diagonally across. So there's our first pocket attached. I'm going to grab the other one now. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit closer now what I have done. So you can see my blue line there. My stitching is just ever so slightly to the right of it, which means that when we turn it out, you can see it's going to line up perfectly with that front panel underneath and the same on this side. So what we're going to do next is we're going to clip the corner here and turn our pocket to the wrong side of our pant piece. So I'm just going to clip straight into that corner. I'm going to be really careful here not to actually cut your stitches. So you want to get as close as you can to your stitches without cutting them. Now the other thing that we need to do because we have this lovely panelling on the front of our jeans is we just need to put a little clip here so that this seam allowance can be pressed towards the front crotch. So just like we did on the back crotch, we want the seam allowance to go that way. So you just need to pop a little clip there so that the seam allowance can then fold the other direction. So I'll do that on this side as well. A little clip and our seam allowance is free to move. Okay, so now I've got my pressing pad here. The first thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to press my seam allowance towards the front crotch. So this is the front crotch here. And we're going to fold the seam allowance that way and then press it. So all the way along the leg, the seam allowance is going to be pressed towards the front crotch. And as I was saying last night, in the day one of this sew along. Um, I usually do just a light press from the back side and then when I get to the right side, I then do a more thorough press. So while I've got it wrong sides up, I'm also going to, I've just, sorry, I'll go back a step. So I've pressed the seam allowance. Now we're getting the pocket piece and we're folding it towards the wrong side. So you just grab your pocket, Flick it, flip it over to the wrong side of the fabric and then we're going to press it. So just getting all of these straight edges up here nice and crisp. Make sure the seam allowance of the panels is still going towards the crotch. And I'm going to press that. Now in this corner here, you want to try and get that corner as nice as possible. If it's getting a little bit crinkly like that, usually it means that you haven't clipped quite far enough in there. And I was having trouble with my scissors and I'm worried about, um, I'm worried about actually cutting my stitches if I go any further. So I'm going to leave it. That's good enough for me. So now I'm flipping it to the right side and I'm going to press this seam again. So now I'm doing a more thorough press so that it's ready for me to top stitch next. Okay, so that's one leg done. So I'll move on to the other leg. Let 
this point I also make sure that my pockets lined up nicely with the side seam and press that corner really well. What we need to do first is top stitch the leg, but we can't top stitch straight from the top to the bottom because that would mean that we are stitching our pocket to the pants, which we don't want. We want our pocket fabric to move freely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this pocket fabric up out of the way and just pop a little pin in it there to make sure it stays up out of the way. And I'm going to top stitch my leg piece starting just about here. So if I look over the other side, that's below where the pocket fabric is. So I'm not going to be catching any of that pocket fabric. And I'm just going to stitch from that pin down the leg of the jeans to the bottom. And as I was explaining on the day one of the sew along, when you are using denim top stitching thread, the the top stitching thread only goes in the needle of your machine. It does not go in the bobbin. So in the bobbin, you just use regular thread and then the top stitching thread in the needle. And I like to top stitch with my seam allowance always facing to the left. I put my needle in the middle position and my stitch length at three and a half. And my first row of top stitching, I sew as close as I can to this seam here that we've just sewn. So my first row is going to be just straight, whoops, straight down as close as I can to that seam. And I'm gonna keep going until I get to that needle that I that I popped in, the, the pin, sorry. And then when I get to that pin, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to raise my needle and leave these threads long because I'm going to tie them off at the back later. So now that I've done that, I'm going to sew my second line of top stitching. And this one, I'm going to be lining up exactly a quarter of an inch from this first line of top stitching. So the way that I do that is that I have got a marking on my presser foot that I know is a quarter of an inch from where the needle is. And so I line up my top line of top stitching with that marking on the presser foot and keep that equal distance the whole way down. So I know that my top stitching will remain a consistent quarter of an inch from the first row. Okay, so again, I'm going to raise my needle, keep those thread tails long, because I'm going to tie them off at the back. So now you can see my top stitching all the way down that first leg. So starting, it's probably about an inch and a half from the edge of the pocket and going all the way to the bottom of the leg. Now what we are going to do is we're going to put our pocket fabric back down and now we are going to top stitch along here and then along this edge of the um, pocket. So I will do first, oops, first I will do this part. So I'm going to start stitching exactly on that line of top stitching so that it will join seamlessly with that line of top stitching. So I'll start there and I will go all the way down and to the edge and then I will do another row that joins seamlessly with this second line of top stitching and goes all the way to the edge. And I'm very carefully lining up my needle and I'm actually going to use my hand wheel to pop it down exactly where that other line of stitching ends. And then away we go. And then when you get to this corner of the pocket, just keep going straight along 
the edge of the pocket. So as close to the edge of the pocket as you can get and up to the top. So I'll show you here. You can see those two threads are going to be tied off, but it's a seamless join right there. So now I'm going to do exactly the same with the other line of top stitching. So I'm using my hand wheel to get the needle down exactly in the right spot to start. Here we go. So another line of top stitching there. And I obviously will tie off these threads later. So the next thing we need to do is two lines of top stitching on this edge of the pocket. So the first line will be as close as possible to the edge of the pocket. And then obviously the next one would be a quarter of an inch in from that. And I like to cross over this top stitching just for a little bit of extra strength in that corner there. I go all the way to the other side of that second line of top stitching. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So rather than stopping my stitching here, I go all the way to the second line of top stitching there, just to give it a little bit of extra strength in that corner. So now I'm lining up the top first line of top stitching with that line on my presser foot again. And Sewing a second line of top stitching. Again, going all the way across to that second line of my vertical top stitching. So there we go. There's one top stitched pocket. So what I'm going to do now is grab my other front piece and I'm going to do the exact same process again with this piece. So first I'll move my pocket out of the way and pin it up there so that it's not going to get caught and pop a little pin in for where I want to start my top stitching. Now because I always like to have my seam allowance towards the left, I'm actually going to be starting this top stitching at the top of the leg, whereas last time I started it at the bottom of the leg. So, actually, that reminds me, I need to have long thread tails here so that I can tie them in later. So I'm just pulling up the thread from my bobbin. Long, but not too long. There we go. And now I will, where was my pin about there? So first line is as close as possible to the seam. from the first one and again I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread so I've got long tails to tie in later. Oh, okay my bobbin has just run out of thread. So now might be a good time if you want to go and get a coffee or a snack because I just need to rewind my bobbin. Also a good time to think of any questions that you have that you might like to ask, pop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have.
So there's our top stitching of our pocket done. So it joins up perfectly with the top, top stitching of the panels. And now I'm going to do two low lines of top stitching across this diagonal part of the pocket opening. Got a lot of threads in the way here, which will all be tied in later. But you can see we've got the two lines that go vertically all the way down the leg. So they've got a seamless join up here. And then we've got the two lines that go across the pocket opening. So it's the same on both sides. Now when we turn over, you can see here that there's no back stitching, so it all just kind of blends in. So now back on the wrong side, what we are going to do is grab our pocket piece and fold it over in half so that um, the pocket is now doubled over on itself. Give it a quick press and then I'm going to pin the bottom of the pocket. So I'm only pinning through the actual pocket pieces now. I am, oops, I'm not pinning the pants leg. So as you can see, the pocket is separate from the pants leg and I've just pinned through the pocket layer. So from the front, you can now see that section of the facing. Remember that we sewed onto the pocket before? And then from the back, we can see our pocket piece. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew along the bottom edge of this pocket here. So the pocket is then closed and then we're going to overlock it. So we're sewing this with a one centimeter seam allowance down the bottom of the pocket and it's with regular thread. So no top stitching thread for this part. There we go, so the bottom of the pocket is now sewn closed. Now I'm just gonna go over to my overlocker and I'm going to overlock that bottom part of the pocket. There we go, so I have overlocked that. Now I'm going to thread these threads through. There we go, so I'm just gonna thread that back through the overlocking here to tie off that end. And the only thing left to do on this side of our pants piece is an optional step to baste along the top and the sides. So I'm going to do that. This just helps to keep your pocket piece in place when you're sewing all of the other parts of these pants. So just sew a quick basting stitch along the top and then a quick basting stitch down the side here and this is going through both layers of the pocket and of the pants piece and that's going to make sure that you can see that on the back side here all of that stays in place when we're sewing our side seams and our waistband later on so now we've completely finished this pant leg I'm going to do the exact same thing over on this other pant leg.
And there we have it. So we've got our front legs finished. So we've done the panels down the front legs with the pocket integrated into it, with the pocket facing and all of the lovely top stitching. So that concludes day two of our sew along. Be sure to join us for day three where we will be doing our zip fly, waistband and all the finishing touches on our jeans.